Welcome back to my channel. Glad you can join me. Today we're going to use Nikon NX Studio to edit a stormy photo. Now before we jump into NX Studio, this is where I've found that NX Studio lacks compared to Adobe Lightroom Classic. I know you can't really compare them, but where Adobe Lightroom really comes in is controlling the dynamic range. Stormy photos like this is a problem editing because we have very dark shadows and we have bright areas. That is the way storms work because right in the center of the storm it's very bright especially like in this photo here you can see right in the center there is this huge cloud mass and it's very bright because the sun is shining on it but right down the bottom left hand corner it is very dark and the top right corner of the image also is very dark. So controlling all this, trying to bring out the shadows, trying to tone down the highlights so we can get an even image is very difficult. And remember this is a raw photo because if it was just a JPEG, I would be very limited in what I could do. Let's jump into it and see what we can do with this stormy photo. So first off, I look and I can see that the horizon isn't quite straight. Now this was just shot handheld quite a few years ago. So we come down here to straighten the horizon and I'll just go to this side here a little bit. Now I can use, now I can use the straightener tool. And if I click up the top here on the straightener tool, you can see now I've got the straightener tool and I just go to the tree line and make a level. But it hasn't straightened it properly. So the easiest way for me to do it is just to keep going down a little bit more and I just click on the down arrow. Now you can see the screen flashes a bit and this is a big problem with NX Studio and something that a lot of people complain about that it lags. My computer there is no way that it should be lagging because I've just upgraded in its i7 computer 32 megs of RAM, a very fast video card. In Lightroom, wow, it just flies. But NX Studio, I think it's the coding, it's just so sluggish that it lags. You just have to put up with it. Now we have our horizon straight, so now let's just go back up to the top here and we'll just start off. So we have the picture controls. We can see here our picture controls were set to landscape, but I want the story photo to have a lot of punch, a lot of grunge in it. Not too much, but to make it a bit contrasty. So instead of choosing the landscape, I'll come up here to Vivid. And you can see automatically, it just brightens up the image a bit. I want to increase the exposure compensation just that little bit. Now I've got to be careful because I don't want to blow the highlights out here. I'm going to choose the white balance. And I'm just going to click on the eyedropper here. Now remember, the eyedropper works the same as Adobe Lightroom where you try to put it onto a neutral gray area. We've got a lot of neutral grays here, look. See right in the middle of this dark cloud here? This looks very much like neutral gray. I click on it. It looks very similar, but I'm just going to now increase the white balance. I'm just going to make it a little bit more warm there. That looks quite nice. You can see the image is still a bit dark, but that's fine. Now, we'll bring up the exposure compensation a little bit more. Now, the next is active delighting, and I want a bit of grunge, so I'll come up to active delighting and I'll choose extra high one. Wow, look at that. It's brightened our image up really nicely already, but to me it's just a little bit too bright. So I'll just bring back the exposure compensation just that little bit. That's it. That's much better. Now we'll add some contrast. I really push the contrast. Normally I wouldn't add too much contrast because it brings a bit of digital noise. Adding contrast here really defines the edges of the clouds and all that. So that's what we want to do. We really want our image to have some pop so people can see. We have quite a few different clouds in there, so we've got good separation between the clouds with our contrast. Now just bring down the brightness just that little bit. That's nice. Now we have highlight protection here. We'll slide that up. Now we've got a bit more definition in this middle cloud here. We'll bring up the shadow protection a little bit. That looks a bit nicer. And the DS lighting just that little bit there. That looks quite good. Look at that. There's already such a big difference. And if we come up to the top here, remember the top here, see adjustments, current, We've got a yellow tick box here. If we click on this yellow tick box, take it off, we see what our original image looks like. So we unclick it. Look at that. This is what we started with. We're only halfway through. We click it. We've already got a very nice image. You have to remember, you can't really compare Lightroom to NX Studio. Lightroom is a very expensive program. Adobe updates it all the time. NX Studio from Nikon is a free software. It's given to you by Nikon just to help you along. So I don't complain that there's limited function. It's a free program. We'll come down here a little bit more. 
Now because I've finished with exposure compensation, I'll click it off. I don't want active delighting anymore, just so we can see some of our panels. Now we have levels and curves. Now in Lightroom, I hardly touch the levels and curves because I don't need to because of all the other settings that I can use. Here, I need to use the levels and curves. So I grab the middle here, I'll just bring it down a bit. Now can you see what's happened? It's just dark in the center a little bit, but I can see more detail. But in the same thing, the outside is dark. So we come down to the halfway here and we'll just push this up a little bit there. Now if we push it up a bit, what we can see is we're just lifting the brightness on the outside of the image here. Look at that, that looks much better. But we can see here, what's it's done, it's affected the blue. See the blues look a little bit different? So we'll just leave that alone now and we'll move to lightness chroma. So we have lightness chroma and hue adjustments. Here I'm going to adjust the blue tones. That's all I'm going to do. So I come down here across and I'll just bring the blue tones down a little bit. But if you look, you can see if I raise it, I really raise it a lot. Now remember it takes a while. Look, this really looks unrealistic, but I'll just bring it down a little bit. That looks really nice. Now I don't need that anymore. Now one thing I did forget was to set the saturation. So we just quickly jump back up here to adjust brightness and color. And we're just going to increase the saturation a little bit. That looks much better. We'll close this panel down. Before we close the lightness, uh, chroma and adjustments, we have here, see color booster. In the color booster we have people and nature. This is a landscape, nature. So we click on nature here and we're just going to boost the colors a little bit. That looks much nicer. Now let's just go back up and see how good our image looks like. Wow, this is original, this is now. Look at that, you should be very happy if you can get this much detail from a free program. The last thing I want to do is, I'm just going to go up to noise. I know that I've inflicted a bit of noise in this image, so we'll just put the noise up just a little bit. Well, we're reducing the noise, sorry. We don't put the noise, we're reducing the noise. And you can see here we have edge noise reduction, or astro noise reduction. This is not an astro image, so we don't have to click it. We can just click here, edge noise reduction, that's it. Now, the next panel is adjust the sharpness. So this is just gonna add a bit of sharpness to the edge of the clouds. We don't wanna overdo this, but we still want to just add a little bit more just for separation purposes. So we click on sharpness, we'll just increase the sharpness a little bit, there. Now I'll just click on the image, there's just slight amount of noise. Now this image was shot at ISO 100, so there shouldn't be that much noise. But because of all the contrast that we've added into this image, I know there's going to be a bit of digital noise here, but that's okay. This still looks very good. We keep going down, that's it. This is all I need to do. Our image is done. Let's look before and after. And you can see, it hasn't taken us that long. Now, because I'm doing a video, it's taken me a bit longer, but editing a photo like this would take you only about five or six minutes. I believe the easiest way to do it is once you've got your horizon straight, then you just start from the top and slowly work down panel by panel. And just like I tell people when I edit photos in Adobe Lightroom is I don't go overboard. I just slightly increase the slider. Then. Once I've worked on the next panel, if I've seen that that adjustment has affected the image too much, I can always go back to the previous panel. Let's say I've adjusted the contrast and the brightness, the highlights, and I've seen now that the photo is a bit too bright. I can go back to exposure compensation and reduce the exposure compensation a bit just to keep my image balanced to where I like it. So now all we do is save, but like Lightroom, it's not save, it's we export the image. So I click on export here, and it tells me I just want a JPEG file. I have to choose the folder, I click browse, and I'm going to put it, this folder here. Export. So this is the raw file, unedited, and this is our image that we've edited in Nikon NX Studio. But can you see here where my mouse is sliding over, right in the center of this big cloud that's coming up? There's a rainbow in there, and we've been able to draw the detail of that rainbow, so we still should be very satisfied with this image. So you can see now that even for stormy photos, you can use NX Studio, and you will get a very good result using your raw files. Now, if you're using just JPEG images, you're gonna be a bit more limited, but you're still going to be able to get a bit of extra detail. But really, NX Studio is built for raw files. If you're using JPEGs, 
you're going to see that a lot of the panels are grayed out. So thanks for watching. If you found value in this video, give me a big thumbs up. I'd appreciate if you subscribe to my YouTube channel if you haven't subscribed yet. Really helps me out. Remember, I have quite a few videos on editing photos in Adobe Lightroom or NX Studio to help you out when you're trying to edit your photos. Stay safe, enjoy photography, and I'll see you next time.